Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, this video is a bit of a shout out. Uh, unfortunately, I would do the shout out, but I can't remember the chappy's name. Um, so, shout out to you, my friend. Uh, a guy who commented on one of my videos recently posed a good question, and he put quite a long post together, so um, I thought I would do the honours of a video response to that rather than just typing a response. So obviously I'm due a video out today, um, so this is going to be an answer to his question, but as the question is kyphosis related, so also kind of going to be my kyphosis update. Let me just uh, tweak the camera there a bit. Alright, try and get the top of my head in the picture. Um, so, what was the question? The question was basically uh, more of a statement, I guess. He said that he agrees with me that kyphosis can be made worse by hunching over a computer, uh, you know, being sat down at work, being sat down watching TV at home, all of the things that I've said before that can make it worse. But he wanted to get my opinion on whether I also believe that it was caused by insecurity, lack of self-esteem, uh, and things like that. And, and so he goes into detail um, about how he didn't really have the best childhood by the sound of it um, so that you know that kind of sucks for the for the guy so um, I wanted to go into this so yes uh, basically I, I do agree sorry I want to tweet the camera again um, yeah I do agree that it it can be and I suspect mine is partially um, or if not you know almost entirely due to that as well um, as I've got older I am a lot more confident uh, than I once was. I, I can't say that I ever had any of the issues that you, you know, you stated you had in your post. Um, you know, I've been quite lucky. My parents have always been quite loving, uh, quite caring growing up, uh, as is the rest of my family. Um, so I've never had any kind of abuse or any issues like that. However, growing up, you know, I wasn't very confident as a kid. Um, I didn't play sports. Um, I didn't really get involved with the popular kids. I did get bullied a bit. Um, and as a result, yes, you, you do kind of hide in your shell. So, um, for anyone who doesn't kind of understand what we're getting at here, I'll give you a little demonstration. So, you know, if you're, um, if, if you're constantly walking around worried about what people are going to say, uh, worried about people looking at you, what people might be thinking if they are, you kind of round your shoulders forward jut your head down, it's kind of like a tortoise trying to get in its shell, you know, you're hiding away from the world, um, and obviously, they, I mean, there have been studies, there is evidence that sitting for, um, I forget the length of time, but it's a really short length of time, I think it's as long as, just as short rather as 20 minutes, if you sit in one position for 20 minutes, that is enough for all the ligaments and uh, you know, connective tissue and the muscles themselves to start deforming. So it's not a position that you're supposed to be stuck in. Um, neither is this. So if you're going like this, you're trying to make yourself appear small by rounding the shoulders in, protecting that face, you know, get yourself all hunched in there um, and hide away from the world, then yes, you're going to stretch the back, you're going to tighten the front, you're going to get all of those muscle imbalances um, that can also be caused by hunching over a computer or hunching if you're tall and you like to talk to people who who are below you. you know, people hunch for all sorts of reasons and yes, I do believe self-esteem is one of them, certainly for myself. Um, you know, as a, as a kid I did do that and I didn't understand the, the balance and the connection between the two. I didn't realise that by taking this posture it would be in the future stuck as my posture forever. Um, or, you know, for a good portion of my life. Um, so, yes, I, I agree that it is in relation to that. And, and on that basis, I'd like to kind of come out to any any parents here. Um, I don't know if there are many parents who watch my videos. Uh, I know, you know, one or two at least who've commented before. So, you know, I in relation to that, I'd like to come out to you and say, please do communicate with your kids, okay? Because kids don't understand these things and the implications they have. So if a kid sits in all day and plays on the PC, and yes, I'm not saying don't let them go on the computer. Kids need to be computer literate, computer literate these days going forward into, you know, the way industry and everything is now. And I'm not saying it's bad to play video games. I love them myself, but 
um, you know, they need to go out and play. They need to move and be active, and they need to understand that, you know, it's like the age-old saying. Kid, uh, parents used to say when I was a kid um, that you know, oh, don't frown if the wind changes your face or stick like that. You know, that's yes, it's a lie. Yes, it's a scare story, but it kind of works. It's on kids' wavelength, and the same is true for your body. You know parents always say sit up straight sit up straight they never tell you why they never explain that correlation and it's not until you're you know 20 sometimes 30 maybe 40 that you turn around and go god i hate the way my body looks and a, a good portion of why it looks the way it looks is because i spent so long hunched over and you know being down on myself so if you're confident your shoulders will be back chest will be up head up you know even if you're not confident fake that get into that posture because that's the posture you are supposed to be in as a human um so yeah educate your kids you know don't let them make the same mistakes we made because we were never taught it's kind of the same as when you find a, an adult who's got pretty bad teeth you know um their parents probably never explain to them that if you don't brush your teeth they say brush your teeth but they don't say what will happen if you don't you know you'll spend hours and hours and hundreds and hundreds maybe even thousands of pounds um, going through dental surgery um, to keep your teeth you know working as you grow up um, these are things that kids need to know and if, if it's explained to them then they'll understand from a younger age I know that's a bit off topic but I, f I feel it's something important to say uh, because as a kid it's not your responsibility to, to look after your body and your well-being it's your parents to educate you how to do that going forward in your life um, so please do that okay so on to the kyphosis update side of things as such um, I'm not going to lie yes I've been very lazy with doing my phone roll and my exercises I've done them every couple of days um, I haven't really been doing them fluently and uh, you know as, as much as I should so for that I can't I apologize that I can't tell you what that does but I'll explain to you the, the reason why is not just because I've been lazy um, I've kind of had an epiphany and a, a change of heart about the whole thing and about movement and, and everything so uh, a while ago one of my videos spontaneous fitness I mentioned Ido portal as I called it um, I have since discovered that uh, apologies to a Mr. Ido portal um, is actually the name edoportal.com or .net I forget I think it's .com um, you know he, it's a guy's name the kind of leader of the movement um, not Ido Portal as I uh, as I had said so this is a guy who calls himself a movement generalist um, and you know he, he's a very inspiring person he basically looks at movement as a whole so not just saying oh you need to train but also uh, you know you just need to move in everyday life and that every little thing that we change about the way we move affects the the way in which our body is shaped and what it's able to do in the future um, obviously we're aware I should imagine most of you are aware and if not you're about to be that that your body is obviously one chain so you have from your feet to your neck you have all of these joints um, and you know they all move together to make all of your joint actions possible um, all of your movements possible so it stands to reason that if one is messed up another will be messed up so if you look at kyphosis as an example but not just kyphosis lordosis scoliosis anything that isn't an osis but is like um, you know a negative postural alignment um, it's uh, da -da, sorry moving the camera again it's um, it's all kind of related in this way so I'm going to talk about kyphosis as that's the one I know most about sorry I'm moving the camera a lot today I didn't get a very uh, didn't get a good position for it before I started and quite frankly I'm too lazy to go back and, and start filming all over again if we're quite far into the video I'm enjoying talking to you guys hopefully you guys are listening um, apologies if I'm making you a bit travel sick with camera movement so I'll just come down here it'll be a bit easier to get me in shot um, kind of fully so there we go that'll do I'll stop messing with it now 
so, okay, the the thing with kyphosis is that yes, kyphosis is an excessively forward rounded thoracic part of the spine or upper mid back. Um, however, that's linked to a lot of other things, a posterior and anterior pelvic tilt. So when the pelvis tilts forward, the lower back excessively curves inwards, which would leave you kind of looking at the sky. So your head would be leant back because the lower back is overly curved. So that's lordosis. As a result, trying to combat that and look forward, your upper back has to excessively round to allow your head to move forward. Um, that, you know, is a problem with the hips, which then relates into the upper body. Now that same problem with the hips tends to lead to an inward rotation of the knees, which leads to a collapse of the arches of the feet. So, you know, do this assessment on yourself now. How many of you guys who are watching this video who do have kyphosis also have uh, flat feet? or you also have a kind of distended looking stomach so even though you're not fat your stomach kind of protrudes forward and that's because of the anterior pelvic tilt so these are all things that are interrelated so what I'm trying to say here is that correcting your feet may push out your knees may straighten your hips may fix your back so rather than taking just solely a direct approach of you know hands-on manual therapies to loosen up that back. The problem with that, of course, is when that is achieved, then you know it's going to collapse back to that because you haven't dealt with the root cause of the problem. Um, you know your entire body and posture needs to be correct. Um, so you know I, I urge you to take a look at this Edo Portal. Um, he's an inspiring chap, and you know his thoughts on movement are very interesting to me. Um, so I'm trying things like now squatting more during the day, which I've talked about before, a human's natural rest position, taking that deep squat, um, you know, when I eat my breakfast or when I'm with clients or whatever, um, I'm doing their hanging challenge, which to, you know, work on scapular retraction and shoulder mobility um, and reclaiming some movements, kind of hanging and swinging that we should still be able to do. Um, and also, you know, that's that's pretty much it at this point, but just being more mobile, so not just sitting down all the time, I'm playing around in the squat, playing around when I'm hanging, twisting, moving, doing all these things, because the seizing up of the spine happens because we don't use that range of motion. So trying to use it more, the body's going to say, okay, you have control of this, allow me more, I can twist more, I can flex more, you know... It, learn, use those body parts as they're intended to be used and then you will be able to um, you know, over time get a greater range of motion um, and I think you know, yoga as well I told you I'd start looking into yoga and something that I've learned from yoga is an innate decision to uh, or, or a taught decision by yogis as they call themselves to um accept your body how it is so not ever force yourself into a stretch but just stretch as far as you can go and say okay this is where I am I'm happy with my body where it is and allow things to happen naturally the more you move and the more you do the more that your body will change and allow you more movement over time so don't just do those stretches and then go back to sitting down because you're just going to be making the situation worse or you know you're not going to be countering it enough um, the other thing, just briefly, I did mention I'd go and see, in one of my comments, another specialist that I couldn't remember the name, not a chiropractor, an osteopath was what I was going for. Um, hopefully I may be having a meeting with one tomorrow, uh, if not Friday, so one of the two days coming up I'll have a meeting with an osteopath and see what they suggest. So that will be manual hands-on therapy um, but I will also still be carrying on with my movement and, and I urge you to do some research and do the same things. Um, so we're getting up to 15 minutes, so please do like the video, please do subscribe, comment below with anything you want to see, and I will see all of you in my next video. Peace, guys.